with you and thank you for coming here to our nation. You know, we may be from different parts of the world, but we get to worship in unity. And where there is unity, God commands a blessing. So I hope you don't mind, but we're going to start tonight by singing a Welsh revival hymn. You know, this is a nation that is rich in revival. And just over a hundred years ago, we saw a mighty move of God in this nation. We saw a hundred and thousand people come to know Jesus in just a short period of time. And we are crying out to God for revival to come again, not just in our nation, but in yours too. And this next song is a song that we'll sing in Welsh and English and we want you to join in and it just says, here is love vast as an ocean. And you know, those hundred years ago, this song was sung in the streets and in the pubs and in the shops and many fell under the conviction and the love of our almighty God because God's love is so vast, yet it is also so near. And as we sing this song tonight, I wonder whether we can bring before our Almighty Father, not just our hearts, but the hearts of our nations, the hearts of our communities. And we can ask that He would open a window whereby a river of love would flow from the throne room into those streets and transform our society by the power of God. So would you stand to your feet? And let's just on your heart right now, just give Him the praise. Give Him the praise. Give Him an almighty praise for His love is as vast as an ocean. Yet in the Psalms it says, His love is oceanic, His loyalty is titanic. Yet in His largeness, nothing is lost. Not a man nor a mouse. And He knows each one of you in this room by name. What a God. So let's lift up His name and ask, we ask Lord God that Your love would not just flow into our hearts, but that we would be vessels for Your love to flow out into our communities and into our nation and that the revival we saw here in Wales would happen all over the world and that Lord, the form, the latter glory Lord would be greater than the former. Dymagariad fel y môr oedd Tostyr i ei Thai fel y llu Tuas og bywyd Pyr yn marw Marw i
But the grave could not contain you, for you will the Chronicles 20, Jehoshaphat sees the Ammonites and the Moabites coming towards him. And it looks like there is a great war at hand. But Jehoshaphat stands in faith and he says, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you, O Lord. My eyes are on you. And it says this, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Take up your positions, stand firm, and see the deliverance that the Lord will give you. You know, whatever battles we face today, we know that those battles belong to Him. Because we are a people who can put down the paper hats of temporary praise to receive the victor's crown which he received and bought for us when he died on that cross and rose to life. So as we sing this next song, Lord, we stand in adoration that you are a God whom every battle which we face, Lord God, we can say, I don't know what to do, but my eyes, oh God, are on you because, oh God, the battle belongs to you. See my victory When all I see is a mountain You see a mountain road And when I walk through the shadow Your love surrounds me There's nothing to fear now 
for I am safe with you. For when I fight, I fight on my knees, when my head's lifted high, oh God, the battle belongs to you, and every fear I Lay at your feet, and I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And if you are for me, who can be against me? For Jesus is nothing impossible. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty, yes you do. And when all I see is a cross, God you see in it. You go before us Nothing can stand against The power of our God You shine in the shadows You win every battle Nothing can stand against The power of our God And almighty fortress And you go before us Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against oh, my the power fortress of and almighty oh, fortress. And you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God.
you never lost a battle No, you never lost a battle I know, I know You'll never win oh, You can do all things You can do all things But fail Cause you never lost a battle no, you never lost a battle And I know, and I know You'll never win You can do all things You can do all things But well, you never lost a battle No, you never lost a battle right now Lord whatever mountains we see in front of us Lord God we thank you Lord that faith as small as a mustard seed can move mountains by your mighty hand so whatever mountains you see in front of you right now Lord we're going to sing this we're going to just sing this chorus one more time one more time that you can do all things but fail let's say to that mountain to move in the name of Jesus right now Whatever that mountain is, let's tell it to move because Jesus reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Faith as small as a mustard seed. That's the smallest seed. The battle belongs to you, God. Just one more time. Sing it to the mountain. You can do all things You can do all things but fail Cause you never lost a battle No, you never lost a battle I know, I know You battle and I 
hallelujah was to the one who's never lo- who has never lost a battle. Brethren, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Your amen means that you agree that he has never lost a battle. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, give it up for some. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. You may take your seats. You can find signs of, Sounds of Wales on Instagram, on Facebook. Follow them. Hallelujah. And let it, what shall we say unto them? The Pentecostal way. What shall we say unto them? God bless you. And no, I don't know. God bless you. Transformers, let me hear your war cry. Mm. <laughs> the devil is still in the room. <laughs> this side, this side. Transformers, let me hear your war cry. Uh, yeah, yeah, the left hand side. Uh, yeah. Transformers in the middle, let me hear your war cry. Okay, the right hand side, you have competition. <laughs> Transformers, let me hear your war cry. They're a small, small number, but mighty. <laughs> small but mighty. My name is Esther. I am your MC. I am your MC for tonight. And please, please. I beg you, if there is a seat next to you, if you can shift, let the ushers know that there is a seat next to you. More people are coming in so that when people come in, they can also sit there. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, are we here? Are we here? Yes, we're here. Are we full? Oh. (laughs) Tonight was chicken. Are we full? Are we full? No. Okay, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Because you are leaving room for the Holy Spirit to do something tonight. Am I right? Okay. You're leaving room for the Holy Spirit to do something tonight and fill you to the brim. Do you agree? Let me hear you say amen. Let's do a little exercise. Amen. Oh, sing with me. Amen. Oh, amen, amen, amen. Sing with me now. Eh. Oh, hello, eh. from Glasgow eh. to London. Amen, amen, amen. In the Okay, they're getting ready in the evening. Oh, amen. 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 The drama is ready, but maybe maybe the keyboard is and the and the bassist and, and everybody else is ready too. So let's try it again. Amen. Amen. God bless you for your participation. 
At this point, we are going to do something special. Turn to your neighbor and say, something special. Something special. And for this, we want to invite someone special. Uh -huh. Someone special. We want to invite our pastor, Richard Kwache, to lead us into this session. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Youth. Oh, come on, youth. Youth. Amen. 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 We are on course. We are on course. Um, somebody says the boy band is back. Yeah, we're back. Hallelujah. But this time for a different assignment altogether. Different assignment altogether. We are grateful to God for something called longevity. You see, the Bible and Christ has been under attack for over 2,000 years. In fact, even before Christ came, everything that pertained to the salvation of man was under attack. And so longevity of the Christian faith and longevity of the servants of God is something that is worth celebrating anywhere. The Bible tells us that those who endure till the end, they shall be saved. Okay, so that means that there's a value in endurance and longevity. And um, as ministers, we, we, we know the value of longevity. Uh, but tonight we want to, um, should I say, place honor where it's fully due. And by that, we want to talk about our national head a little bit. Yeah. We want to. Yeah. Oh, not, nothing scary, nothing scary. Yeah. Um, the church in the United Kingdom started as a small fellowship. And we're talking 1989 where many of you were not even born yet. Uh, or am I lying? Yeah. Okay. Some of you were born. Uh, many of you weren't. And by the Lord's great grace, the church is where it is now boasting over 21,000 members in the United Kingdom. In fact, statistically, it is the second largest diasporan church in the United Kingdom. I bet you didn't know that. Yeah, I bet you didn't know that. Yes. Now, this happens by God, but with the agreement and work of man. And in 1995, God, through his grace, sent us a special man. Sent us a special man to serve this great church as our first pastor taken from the United Kingdom. And that was our dear father, Apostle Osei Owusu-Afri. Hallelujah. Now, um, for some of us, we would have never known what it's like to lead a small church. In fact, some of the churches were like home cells at that time. And a lot of the grafting work, knocking on doors, chasing up members, picking up people, going to funerals, going to funeral homes, going to the hospitals, and one man. But through it all, the work grew. And I always say that he created vacancies for us. Yes, he created vacancies for us. And today, um, the church, just in the UK, maybe if we take away the uh, missionaries, um, we're talking at least 34 ministers in the UK from one. He was our seed. And this year, by our Lord's grace, um, and longevity, our God is calling him to come and rest from the active work of service. But as his last youth conference, we cannot watch him go by without doing something. Okay. So at this moment in time, I want us to stand. We want to give a standing ovation as we call onto the stage our dear father, Apostle Osei Owusu, a free year. Come on. 
Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Raise the roof. 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 A great instrument of grace that God has given the church worth celebrating. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And you can take your seat. Uh, so we're going to do something on behalf of yourself. Um, Papa, you know, the youth, we don't have too much money. But the money is coming. Uh, the money is coming. But we did something from the bottom of our hearts um, with the very fiber of our talent by one of our own young people. Yeah, by one of our own people. Um, we want to present this beautiful portrait to our dear father. This was drawn from scratch. This was drawn from scratch. Is our sister Andrea Adumansa here? Andrea, let me embarrass you a bit. Stand to your feet. Let the camera capture Andrea for a moment. Can the camera capture Andrea for a moment? Is it, is it possible? Can we get the camera to capture Andrea? Andrea, stand, please. Where's the camera? Okay, we will let her come later. All right, Papa. So, this is um, the portrait from your beloved young people. It is a stylistic expression of our love to you. Uh, as you can see, you're a proper fine, fine man in this. Yeah, just as you are. Yeah. So, we want to present this on behalf of the National Youth and Pension Ministry to you in the name of God the Father, of God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Oh, come on, do it one more time. Hallelujah. The Bible says something in 1 Timothy 3.13. It says, those who have served well gain an excellent standing and great assurance in their faith in Christ Jesus. And so one day, if you serve well just as our Father has, that excellent standing will be yours also. God bless you. All right, at this moment in time, I know we have a special theme for today's praise party. But the first one, listen to me clearly, please. The first dance belongs to us and Papa. Yeah, this one. We want to get our COP, you know. We want to do our thing. All right, T-Nation. Let's get it, please. Amen.
sure you all know it so I'm not going to sing much I want to hear you okay yeah is that okay
Pastor Caleb. Pastor Caleb is trying to uh, start praises part two. <laughs> pastor Caleb has forgotten he's now a pastor. He's no longer a youth. <laughs> pastor Caleb, please. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. Hey, our instrumentalists are here. We got a drama here. Give it up for our drama. Tonight is a special night. Oh, do you believe tonight is a special night? Tonight is a special night. It is a special night. Full of special people. We have another special person in our midst. Turn to your neighbor and say, someone special. Oh, someone special. Someone special. She sings. You're going to help me introduce her. Do you know who she is? Oh, do you know who she is? Are you sure? Okay, can we be on our feet? Can we be on our feet? When I say we're going to help, you're going to help me introduce her, I mean it. So on three, we're going to shout her name. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome one, two, three. Niela, hallelujah, make some noise. Oh, keep making noise as she is coming. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Jesus is worthy. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy to be exalted. He's worthy to be lifted up. There is nobody like him. There is no one besides him. There is no one before him. In all the earth, there is absolutely nobody. There is no man, there is no woman, there is no child, there is no power, there is no principality. Be them from the heavens, the earth, under the earth, in the seas. Other gods have come and tried it, but they were not able to tack him. They were not able to even come close to who he is. He is the one who created the heavens and the earth and everything inside of it. And when he said, let there be light, moons were formed and stars were formed and the sun was formed. He is a God who is intricate and detailed and specific and wondrous and marvelous. And when he said, let there be vegetation, trees came and grass came and flowers came and seeds came and photosynthesis happened and so much happened within that and when he said let there be fish in the sea sharks were created and dolphins were created and shrimp were created and so much was created even sponges were created he is a God who is intentional and he is a God who even looks after the birds of the air and so why won't he look after us human beings that were created in his image in his likeness we look like him we walk like him we talk like him everything that we are is like him because we are literally mirrors of who he is and so we have authority and so we have power and everything that is inside of him is inside of us and so if you are going through something if you are in a situation if you are depressed if you are bound if you are suffering with addiction look to the Lord because he is the one who is able to break every single chain and there is nothing that is able to stand against him nothing that is able to compare to him nothing that is like him so look at your situation in the face and let them know that the creator of the heavens and the earth he came to earth and he entered flesh and became, became human and he literally went up to Calvary and he died on the cross 
and he shed his blood and he allowed them to put the crown of thorns on his head and put the nails in his feet and in his hands and then he descended into hell and then on the third day he arose in all power he arose in all glory and he took the keys from death and Hades they no longer have any power there is no demon there is no principality that can hold you down that can stop you that can hold you bound because the king of all kings is our father somebody say hallelujah, hallelujah. amen and where he is that's where we want to stay in his presence where there is fullness of joy where we are made whole where we are made complete so today we just want to say father lord where you are that is where we want to stay that is where we want to be. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. I want to stay in your presence, God. I want to live in your presence, God. Right where you are. Right where you are. That's where I want to be forever, forever, right where you are, right where you are. That's where I want to stay, at the foot of the cross, where your blood flows from. Calvary over me where you are Jesus right where you are that's where I want to stay where you change my name oh God where you change my name
This is the point where you want to tell him something, you want to say something to him. Lift up your voice in this room. We will wait on you in the hard times, we'll wait on you in the difficult times, Father. We will not waver. We will not look to the left, we will not look to the right. But we will keep our hope in you. We will keep our faith in you. It says in your word that if we have faith as small as a mustard seed, if we tell the mountain to move, it will move. There is nothing that is impossible for you, oh God. There is nothing that is too big for you. There is nothing that is too difficult for you. So we will wait. We will hold on to your promises. I just want you to take your seat and as you take your seat just let that heart of worship be ready to receive a word receive a word here is where we are and here is where he is and I want us to be expectant. I want our ears to be attentive. Our eyes to be open. A spiritual awakening has occurred this week. And we cannot miss it. His word is coming. It is a lump onto our feet. And a light onto our path. His word is coming. It is the breath of life. His word is coming. What are you expecting? It is a transformative word. It is a transformative word. So transformers, please help me welcome Pastor Ebenezer Ejampong with a loud war cry unto the King of Kings
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please let's be seated. Thank you very much. Thank you. I am grateful to God for that. Can you please check the sound uh, for me? It's not coming through the monitors, so I'm just hearing the echo. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Oh, is the other microphone okay? Can you help me? I don't hear it through the monitors. I only hear the... Um, what is coming from outside. Anyway, I want to one, once again appreciate our national head and all the leaders uh, for organizing a beautiful conference. I think we can appreciate them. Let's appreciate them greatly. Our dear Pastor Kwache and the team, they, are, they have done a great, 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 great job. Hallelujah. And we thank God for what he is doing. Um, thank you all, all the organizers. God richly bless you. God richly, richly bless you. Amen. Okay. Um, our sister who ministered, God bless you so much. You have encouraged me to sing three songs. I thought that, I thought people don't really like three songs. Uh, but you have encouraged me. God bless you. As they sort out the sound, please help me out. Otherwise, I will struggle here. Um, let's, there's a tree song. I want to teach you a tree song and then we can go. It's very simple. Now, in tree, when you say, Odomankuma, no, listen. When you say Odum Ankuma in tree, Odum Ankuma, the only giver of grace. Wonku na uma Adum, Odum Ankuma. So the song is very simple. Odum Ankuma na nenyame. Ye yi wa yeda. Se ye nyawa na ye nya adie nyina. Odum Ankuma na nenyame. Very simple song. Is that, is that okay? Okay. So Odumankuma na nenyame Ye yi wa ye da Se ye nyawa na ye nya dinyina Odumankuma na nenyame Simple Say ye wa na ye nya dinyina Oduman kuma na no nya me You can sing with me say ye nya wa say ye nya wa na ye nya dinyina Oduman kuma na ne Okay so Yes, we are now good to go. Yes, that's fine now. Thank you. We can, we can pick it up later. Because of our time, we want to quickly um, share a few things and make time to pray. Hallelujah. Um, yesterday, we started handling a particular topic on understanding and strategically positioning yourself for the end time battle. So, we try to explain the kind of battle we find ourselves in. How many of you have issues with, issues with stage fright? Like you, you, are, you don't like standing before people. You don't want to stand before people. Yeah, how many? Quite a number, right? Try and work on it. It'll be a blessing for you. Now, there are things you would have to overcome and fight while young. If you wait until you are a little bit older, it becomes more difficult. Something like driving. If you don't learn how to drive from 20 to 30, 35, once you hit 40, it becomes more difficult to learn how to drive. I'm not saying it becomes impossible. It becomes more difficult because, you see, it is difficult to teach old people new things. 
when somebody grows to a particular age, it's difficult to teach them new things. Even with phones, do you realize our mothers, no matter, or no matter what you do, there are some of the things they, they just won't get there. Is that right? Uh huh. Mummies, they are laughing at you. They are saying, you do this. So there are things you need to fight and work on while young. David killed Goliath at a very young age. Do you know that later in life, David attempted killing the brother of Goliath? And David nearly died. Men had to come to his rescue. So David, as a young person, kills Goliath effortlessly. Years after when he had become a king, he was a grown man. He attempted a similar thing. The men went, the, the giant nearly killed him. They said, King, from today you are not going to war again. Stay at home. We'll go and fight. But when he was younger, he handled Goliath. Now, growing up, I had issues with standing before people. You know, whenever I stood before people to preach, the Bible I'm holding, my hand will shake. And then all the saliva in my mouth will dry up. Any witnesses here? Then, sometimes you are so confused. By the time you are done, you feel like you, you embarrassed yourself. I didn't do well. I didn't do well. I didn't do well. I didn't do well. One of those times, I preached and I felt like, oh, I didn't, I didn't say this thing well. I didn't do well. One guy came to me and said, please, preach to me. So I finished preaching to him. He got up and said, oh, your preaching is not nice. Now, listen. You press on, we press on, we press on, we press on. You do it, it doesn't go well. You do it again, it doesn't go well. So the first time I stood before, before people to preach was in, I think, 1999. Then I tried it, tried it, tried it. I think 10 years after, by then I had become a little bit better. 10 years after, I received a call that we want you to come and preach at this youth meeting. So I prepared and went. when I went there, 10,000 young people gathered. 10,000. I think that was 2008. 10,000. It's like five times this congregation. Now when I looked at them, I felt a satisfaction. I thanked God that I overcame that phobia. I'm imagining if I still had been playing around it. Now you are going to stand before 10,000 people. That can be intimidating. So there are things you need to work on right now and fight while you are young. Because when you grow up with them, it's not going to be helpful for you. So, yesterday, we established that the devil always goes after God's agenda. When God is up to something, the devil follows after. We established that. Then we also realized that this battle is about the souls of men. Capturing the souls of young people. Capturing the souls of men and women. Then we also said that God's goal is that one, everyone should be saved. 1 Timothy 2.4 Then 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 9 It says that God is not slow concerning his promises as some of you count slowness. But he's patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish. God does not want anyone to perish. And so God's Agenda is that everyone will be saved. Now, after you are saved, God's purpose is that you will grow and mature in him, be filled with the Holy Spirit, live for him, and bring others to Christ. But you see, the devil is comfortable with people who are not really strong, who are weak. But tonight, may you receive strength. Sometimes, you see, you don't need a title like a pastor or an elder or a dickin or a dickness to be powerful. You don't need that. When I was young, we started praying. One of the elders of the church came to me and said, um, I, I, can we go and have an all night? Now, I realized that this elder was feeling weak in prayer. He's an old man. So, we organized a two-man all night. So, with him, we went for an all night. I was a young person. We started praying. The elder sat down. Then I was praying. I was just praying, praying, we're praying. While we're praying, I looked. The elder was gone. 
he was asleep. He slept throughout the whole prayer. The all night, he called me for the all night. Oh. He slept. Now at that time, I didn't understand him. Oh, elder, elder. I'm a member. You are an elder. Elder is elder. But now I understand. He was thinking about school fees, his wife, the children, the job. There were so many things on him. As a young person, my parents were providing for me. I had enough time to spare, so I was strong. There are things I attempted. I, I try to attempt now. Oh, I mean, those days you could fast. You fast, you do seven days. You are not eating. You are, you are doing all that. One of those days, recently when I got into ministry, I said, I'm going to try one of those. Hey. Hey. I was in the car, then I saw the world going around like that. It was just going around. I said, mm -mm. man is no longer. There are things you need to do when you are young. When you are young. And so God wants us to grow and it has to be now. It has to be now. You have to start it now. You have to start developing yourself now. Growing yourself up right now. Building up yourself. And then, you see, as you build up yourself, test your anointing. Tell someone, test your anointing. Test your anointing. I think that sometimes we should just get you a master class. We get you some witches and then we, we give you a room. Okay, that's your project work. Handle this witch. Project work. Handle this witch. Handle this witch. Test, test the anointing. Amen. No, what do you think? Yeah, project work. Just test. Okay, stay in this room with this witch. Let's see. Now, if light and darkness meet, who runs away? Darkness. Are you darkness or you are the light? I said, are you darkness or you are the light? And the light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehends it not. Hallelujah. So if I am living with a witch in the same room, the witch must leave. If I am running away, there's something wrong with my orientation. Amen. <laughs> we, went to, we went for a crusade somewhere in the northern part of Ghana. We were students. I think I'd completed school. Very young. I mean... <laughs> Now, when we got there, there was this um, traditional priest. Very powerful one, of course. I mean, that's how people called him. And people were coming from Accra to come and see him. They would come and consult with him. A very remote village. Now, where we were asked to sleep was very close to the shrine. Very close. Now, I went with one gentleman who was now growing in the faith. So, we were very close. And so, when we woke up, I told him that once we are here, we are here to evangelize and to win souls. And evangelism is not about eloquence. It's not about how well we can speak. There has to be a power back in your words. Hallelujah. One time, they sent the guards to go and arrest Jesus when he was preaching. So, the guards stood at the door of the building, waiting for him to finish speaking, then they can arrest him. As they stood there and listened to Jesus, they went back. And they asked them, where is he? He said, no man ever spoke like him. It was not the eloquence. There was some power back in the words. Hallelujah. So, we went and then we, I told the gentleman, this is how we are going to win this. Every morning we are going to do warm up. Two hours. Two hours warm up. So we wake up. He, he has done great things. No, no topic, no prayer topic. No, just tongues. Two hours straight. By the time you are done, you know that your hands want to find work to do. Hallelujah. So, we did every day. We wanted to start a crusade. So, I think we started a crusade on a Thursday. On that Thursday, we did our two hours. We prayed. You see, it's not because of anything. You are, how many of you, do you use generators here? Like a plant or generator? Oh, you don't have so here, so you don't know what it is. Okay. This example would have been very relevant in Ghana, but not here. Not here. Listen. When we prayed two hours before the crusade, we decided that we're going to call the deacon in charge of the church to do another two hours, three hours. So we did three hours in the evening, then two hours in the morning. So we had done five hours, all that. Ay, Christianity is real. It is real. So we, we organized the crusade. The people didn't come. 
they were in their houses because they had subscribed to this fetish they had bangles around their hands and the, so they would not come so when we started preaching come to Jesus come to Jesus come to Jesus we're preaching nobody was around but I could feel literal power moving living to the houses of the people I knew that within no time something will happen preached we gave a word of knowledge we started men there's this girl in my room and she wore my my slippers to the bathroom when she came back and I wore the slippers I felt something moving in my head I said really okay then she came to lie on my bed and then when she got up from my bed I also used the same bed and I'm not feeling well and then she was trying to caught my sympathy but I said no how can a lion come and be crying Ooh, lion Ooh, why I met a goat by the roadside and the goat has embarrassed me the goat has beaten me lion lion just ha ah, the goat will run away I pray that may that consciousness come to you amen so build up and test test the anointing so test it test it you test it pray if somebody is sick pray for the person test it don't just come and receive and go test it um somebody came to us that he had an experience where he in a dream he saw a cobra and the cobra do cobras spit do they spit what do they do that thing they do what do they do when they, they do the venom, how do you call that? They hiss. No, the hiss is the noise they make. But when they throw the saliva, how do you call it? Spit, lest you, lest you spit. So the, the cobra had spat into his eyes. And so when he woke up in the morning, his vision had become blurred. This is an intellectual in the university. It's not... One week after, he came and said that he saw this same, maybe a, a similar snake. This time I met no, 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 the cobra had coiled itself around him, and when he got up, he could feel pain at his back. When I heard that, I said, eh. See, These are the times where you know whether the anointing you have received is authentic or is fake. When he told me, I said, Let's meet at the park, let's pray with you. So we met there, gathered some people, uh, we prayed, and then I was not an elder, I was not a deacon. We laid hands on him. There is a point where you can tangibly know that what you have, you have. Silver and gold have we none. But such as we have, there's a point where you know that you have it. It is there. It's not something you're imagining. It's there. Boom! We laid hands on him. Once, well, immediately we laid hands. He just went this way. Down. We saw him. He started slithering like a snake. I said you will leave today we prayed for him I was not an elder I pray that we'll get to that dimension okay now let me quickly say that in this battle we are talking about you need power and I said that God identifies men and women the devil identifies men and women and then he empowers them and then when you are empowered you are also trained you go through the male. You don't just wake up. That's why I'm very careful with celebrities who come to accept Christ and knew. And then we start giving them big platforms because they were, it's a very don't do it. It's a dangerous thing. Being a celebrity and having a stage as someone who is not born again. If you become born again you have to go through new convert class. You, just, you don't just switch and say I become an evangelist. Because you were in the world. No. It takes time for things to grow. Very soon you give the person a platform and the person will mess up the whole thing. You don't do that. So it's important that people are trained. People are developed. So God takes you through processes. You go through stages of life. You go through difficult challenges. So when you are going through difficulties, it is so that your story can become beautiful. God is building you and he's training you up. Amen. We, we've all been through something. You ask our pastors, our mommies here. 
you have to go through times, terrible times. People will deny you, people will reject you, people will not treat you well. If you're a music minister or you are a singer or something, don't worry about people not treating you well. Don't, don't worry. You have to go through that. People have to make you feel like you are nothing. You have to go through it and yet develop character. Amen. I have driven from one place to another place to go and preach. I drove for five hours. I was the one to go and preach. I sat down. They didn't call me. They didn't call me. I drove back seven hours. Nobody called me. But I was the one on program. They didn't call me. I have driven eight hours to a place. I asked the minister, please, where am I going to sleep? He said, there's no place for you to sleep. So maybe try and find somewhere. Oh, so I had to find my own place and go. And You have to go through this. These things are normal things. You have to go through them. People may not like you. They may not accept you. Even in school, you might go through challenges. That's part of the building process. Don't say, I want to die. I want to die. I don't know what's happening to me. I don't know. There are so many things. No. Go through it. Difficult times. When I was at the university, at one point, first year, I started hearing a voice. You will fail. You will go home. You will fail. You will, a loud voice. You will fail. <laughs> you will fail. Hey, what is this? I went to pray. I cleared it. At another point, challenges upon challenges. I completed school, university, and I had papers to race it. I had papers to race it. Now, I said, well, I'm going to be a pastor. I'm not going to race it. What am I using the certificate for? I don't need the certificate. Because I had papers to race it before I could graduate. And it was a challenge. I was a pencil president. You know pencil president in Legon? Hey, you are a celebrity. Ah, people could send messages. Somebody, my lady swing president will come and tell me that. President, this lady says she likes you. <laughs> then, oh, I have to go back and race it. It was a challenge. I, I said, I won't do it. One day I was praying about my life. And then I had a dream. There was this graduation ceremony ongoing. People, everybody's robed. Left with caps. I was the only one without a cap. Then they made an announcement. Please, all those without caps, you cannot graduate. I started running. Do you have a cap? He said, no, my, I have only one. Do you have a cap? Uh, then I got up. Then God told me, you have to go. You have to, you have to race it. You have to go. So I went back. Very challenging time. Very, very challenging time in my life. I used to go there in the night. When we were going to write the paper, if the paper is starting at 2, I get to the exam hall at 12.30 and I put my head on the table so that those who are coming will not see me. If I wait for them to sit down, if I'm entering, they will see me. So I get in, put my head on the table until I hear start work. Then when I'm done writing, I don't want to walk through and go and submit. I wait till they say stop work and I sit. Then they collect all the papers. I remain seated until everybody's gone. Then I go. Went through it. But I'm here. I've now completed my master's. I didn't die. Listen. I didn't die. Oh, tell someone you're not going to die. Hey, I, don't I don't know what that's up to me. I don't know. Only me. On hey. Should we tell you our own? Should we tell you our own? I came into ministry not too long. I have had three motor accidents. For one of them, I was bandaged. My hands were like this. On a motorbike, prime on a highway, fell down, blood all over. You have to, you have to be strong. Nine months, nine days after that accident, my wife also lost a, a child. We lost our pregnancy six months. So when I, I went to the hospital, I had the bandages on my hands, and then all that. But you see, these things make you strong. You cannot be a soldier without scars. You cannot be a soldier without going through it. This generation wants this bread and butter kind of life where you don't go through anything. You don't go through any challenge. You just want everything to go on. No, they are supposed to build you up. Make you tough. Be a strong person. Hallelujah. Paul said, 
Blessed be the Lord God who comforts us from every trouble so that we with the comfort we have received might comfort others. So it's to make you strong. Build you up. Now that I'm sharing with you, you are happy, right? You are clapping. If I didn't go through it, who will share with you? So you go through that. Now, the strategy of the devil is this. Let's look out for the points in society. Oh. Let's look out for the various strongholds. Now, when Samson had been blinded, his eyes were taken off, his hair was shaven, and then um, he was made a slave. The Bible says that his hair began to grow. Now, when his hair was growing, he told the gentleman who was leading that, please position me where the pillars, you know, in every building or every structure, they are critical pillars. Once you touch them, you touch the whole building. Society is like that. They are critical pillars in society. Once you hit those pillars, in fact, you are making an impact. So what the devil is doing is that he has identified people in the area of fashion, arts, and entertainment, anointed them to be his agents. And God has also identified people with media. Now, with the issue of fashion, let me show you something in the Bible. Are, are you ready? Numbers chapter 25. Uh, oh, we need to pray. Numbers 25. Can we have it on the screen or we read from verse 1 to 4? Numbers 25. Quickly, 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 and then we can. Uh, okay, let me read. Let me read from here. Numbers 25, from 1 to 4. While Israel was staying in Shittim, okay, the men began to indulge in sexual immorality with Moabite women who invited them to the sacrifices of their gods. The people ate the sacrificial meal and bowed down before these gods. So Israel yoked themselves to the Baal of poor. Now listen, let me give you a background to the story. The Israelites were a blessed people. They were traveling and they came close to Moab. Now one of their kings called Balak realized that he could not defeat the Israelites. So he went to call a prophet called Balaam to come and curse them so that they would not be able to overcome them. Now when Balaam came, he tried cursing them. He tried and tried and tried. He could not. Then Balaam said, King, I have an advice for you. This is but we can't curse them. But we can let them curse themselves. So that is what is called the doctrine of Balaam in Revelations. King, I have an advice for you. You know what? We can't curse them. But if the women start sleeping with your, if the men, the Israelite men, start sleeping with your women, God himself will be angry with them. And he will thwart their efforts. Balak said, oh, that's good. That's good. So following day, Balak called an assembly. All the young ladies, all the women, come, 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 come. come. Listen, we are confronted with a challenge. Our enemies are right before us. Now, the advice is that you will have to seduce the men. Once you seduce them and they sleep with you, we can overcome them. The women said, yeah. So how do we do it? Following morning. Ooh, 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 ooh. So, dressed in some way, the men started seeing, it. fine girls, fine girls, fine girls. It's called the doctrine of Balaam. And you see, it has entered the fashion industry. You might not know it. Might not. So you see, people are now sewing dresses. Once you go and buy this knife, you wear it. It is seductive. Very seductive. But you say, oh. So that's the strategy. Let's possess the fashion industry. So that was Balaam's advice. If you read chapter 31, verse 15 to 16. You will see there, Numbers 31, um, 16, 15 to 16. 
It says that, And Moses said unto them, Have you saved all the women alive? Go on please, 16. Behold, these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespass. Through the so a prophet advised that they should do that. So the fashion industry has been young ladies, listen, young Jay. Don't say dressing doesn't matter, it matters in this battle. There's a young guy here who is gradually overcoming pornography. If he comes to church, let church be a nice place for him not to be pornographic. Are you listening? That he cannot be struggling with pornography outside. Come to church and the sisters who are supposed to be helping are also dressed like one of those people in there. Somebody says it's the doctrine of Balaam. This one is not nice. No, this one is not nice. This preaching is not nice. But that is the strategy of the devil. The doctrine of Balaam. Media. Let's get in there. Let's get into media. Let's distract them. Let's get into entertainment. So you realize that in church now, in church, once it is entertainment, whether it makes spiritual or scriptural sense or not, something like, something like, this is your code to This is my code to This is This is your code to Listen. This is your koto What does it mean? You see, it's something just to. Be, we, we, you see, we have gotten to a point where whether it means something or it doesn't mean anything, once it's interesting, it's entertaining, we get into it, we buy into it. We buy into it. So something has to be entertaining, it has to be nice. But do you know that the root word for entertainment means distraction? Yes, to distract you. Check it. You, you, are, you get distracted. The educational institutions, let's attack them, let's train. That is why you need to learn and let God place you somewhere. I see some people being placed as government officials. I see some people coming out as fashion designers, Christian fashion designers who design attires that resemble, that give resemblance to someone who is a Christian. I see young people getting into the educational industries, the, the educational institutions, the academia, professors, standing up and saying that we are going to allow prayer in this school. Hallelujah! That is what the battle is about. So the devil has targeted us. So you are then they say, in this school you can't pray. Over here you can't do this. You can't pray. You can't do this. You can't do this. So he sends in people there in government to enact laws that are anti-Christian. That is what the battle is about. And listen, how many of you want to be teachers here? You want to be a teacher? Is it the same thing as Ghana? In Ghana, two people don't like to be teachers. Who? Now, listen. I think that the greatest evangelists will be teachers. I was a teacher for two years. Listen. I taught what we call class three pupils for two years. So one batch of class three and then another batch of class three. Listen. I was their teacher. They come to school at seven, close at three. How many parents have that amount of time with their children? How many parents? From seven to three p.m. I don't know how long you take in school over here. How many parents have that amount of time? So I had that time with them seven hours every day. No, seven to three. That's eight hours with them, interacting with them, talking to them. That is great evangelism. Now I meet some of them and say, Sir, sir, I'm so excited because we imparted them. So that is where the battle is. Now, let me land. Because we have this ahead of us. Like I said yesterday, accept Jesus. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. I talked about that. We will go into, with the permission of our, our leaders here, we'll do another Holy Ghost baptism session. I hope that's fine. How many of you have not yet received? Lift up your hands. You have, you have not yet received. Them. Please lift up your hands. Let's see you. Okay, can you please be on your feet? I want to see. If you don't mind, please. Wow, wonderful people. Great. Great. 
Okay, please be seated. Now, when we start praying, uh, with the permission of leaders, we, when you are coming, form queues and leave spaces in between so that we can walk through. Is that right? I believe that it is important for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I talked about that yesterday. Another thing is that you would have to be a student of the word. Study the word. If we had time, I would have done an exercise for you here. Where I'll let somebody open anywhere in scripture and start reading. Your goal should be that if somebody opens anywhere in scripture and the person is reading, you should know at least from which book the person is reading. How can you handle the Bible for 10 years and not be good at it? How can you handle the Bible for 20 years and then we are reading something in the New Testament and you think it's the Old Testament? No! Somebody say, I'm not going to be a pastor, I'm not going to be a preacher, so I don't need that. The day the devil comes knocking, you will realize that you didn't need to be a pastor to know the word. And the devil came to Jesus, said, if you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. Then he said, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then prayer and fasting, especially fasting. Fasting. Please, make time to periodically fast. Make time to seek the face of God. Make time to fast. Fasting helps you to wear one attire for a long time. You can wear one attire for five years if you keep fasting because you're not, you're not putting on weight. Somebody say amen. That's a physical benefit to fasting. So learn how to, you won't die. Tell someone you won't die. Two things for which no reward is given to anyone and yet we enjoy them. Food and sleep. It has never happened that at the end of the year they called someone and said, this in 2021, you are the one who slept the most, received this award. Never. Or you are the one who ate the most, received this award. Never. And yet you see, a lot of, for a lot of people it's very challenging. And I'm a pastor, listen, fasting is not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. But you have to press on so that you can discipline your flesh. Amen. This morning I decided I'll fast. But I was with my boy and I ordered, I decided to order breakfast for him. When they brought the breakfast, I said, ah. <laughs> when they brought the breakfast, I said, mm. Mm. from Ghana, I'm in a five-star hotel. They have brought Mindy B. Won't I eat some? The thing tempted me, uh, I overcame. Yeah. Amen. So I'm telling you that no matter what, yeah, there are challenges. When you are hungry, fast, pray, push on. And then evangelism. Then lastly, see, seek for opportunities in society to, to get somewhere where you can influence that place. If there is a school position, go for it. If there's a political, anybody wants to be a politician here? If there's a political door somewhere, get in there with your Christian fire. Make sure you are making changes there. If there is any aspect you want God to move there, get in there. Get in there. Hallelujah. Get in there and reveal Christ to many. I pray that tonight God will move mightily here. Amen. Let me see all those from um, understand. We call it MK, right? MK. Let's see. Please be on your feet. Let me see. No, be on your feet. Let me see. Okay. Great. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are live, right? Are we live? Okay, okay. Then we can do some things. Please, let's rise to our feet and pray. Some things don't go online, so... Now, please, all those to receive the Holy Spirit baptism, can you please come forward? Can you please come forward quickly? You see? Okay. Now let's do... Oh. Holy Spirit move in this place for we wait 
we wait. Um, our dear pastor, listen. Those of you come and listen. I would plead with you. Uh, we'll do a decongestion exercise here. See, there's all this space available for us. Are we allowed to? We're allowed. So there's enough space here. We will let as many people queue there. And then as we pray, let's have queue so that we could walk through and then minister. Yes. Straight lines. Okay, you call them lines, right? Okay. So once we have enough people here, let's please move the rest to that the other side. Once we have enough people here, let's move the rest to the other side, please, if you can help us as we, we get into a time of prayer. Now, listen to me. Listen. You are going to receive the Holy Spirit right now. As I'm speaking, some of you are already receiving. Are you listening? Probably... Uh, so for, is that is today our last night of prayer like last night mm -hmm. this one last one maybe tomorrow we might do another one I don't know what it is but listen you are saying I'm not leaving here today like I came something must happen to me something must happen to me something must happen to me now can we have some silence here as they help? I said we're online. Listen, as we are praying, God is moving here. Amen. I said God is moving here. I see some young people giving chariots. You know chariots? They are giving chariots. And at the back of the chariots is like, you know this fire that comes out of a rocket? So you see these chariots with fire behind. Being handed over to people. And then I see people sitting in and moving in power. As we are praying, there's going to be a distribution of gifts here. Something will happen to you. Hallelujah. Something is going to happen to you. So, Holy Ghost baptism, listen, look at me. The Holy Spirit will not force you. When I came to stand here to preach, if I did not open my mouth, the Holy Spirit will not. So don't expect that the Holy Spirit will come and do you. You would have to open your mouth. You have to have faith. And see, forget about it. the devil come to you and say, no, 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 you, are not, you don't deserve it. You are not righteous. You, 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 don't, you don't qualify for that. Tell yourself, I qualify. Through the blood of Jesus, I qualify. Amen. And don't expect your tongues to be like ours. We have been speaking for several years. It might come in very simple terms. Again, don't expect to fall down. Some people might fall down. Others don't fall. I never fell down. Others don't fall down. And yet, it's the Holy Spirit. So somebody's thinking like, if it's the Holy Spirit, I should fall down. No. You might not fall down, but it's the Holy Spirit. Don't wait for anybody to lay hands on you before hands are laid on you. Receive. Amen. Before hands are ever laid on you, receive. For those who have already received, you are saying that, oh God, I'm receiving a grace, an impartation, something extraordinary, something supernatural. So listen, we have just a few minutes more. I want you to pray for the next 15 minutes. I don't give any topic. No music. No instruments. No, ah, ah, nobody's praying to the microphone. Only the keyboard and then the voices. You are saying, oh God, let something happen to me. If you want to lie down, you can lie down. Whatever you want to do, cry out to the Lord. And listen, before hands are ever laid on you, you will, you will see that you start speaking in tongues. People will just start speaking in tongues and flowing without hands being laid on you. Lift up your voice right now and begin to pray.
Whichever way you can encounter God. Okay. Let's, if we can hold on with the microphones, we just want to hear your voices. So no, my, we are not praying to the microphones. We want to hear you praying. Lift up your voice and pray. Let's hear you. Don't worry, it's going to build up. It's going to build up. We have about 10 15 minutes. It's going to build up. You will see people who start receiving without hands being laid on you. People will start receiving. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to concentrate and say, Tonight is my night. Travel in prayer. Pray to receive something from God. Yes, it's going to build up. Don't worry when you're not hearing them. Voices through the microphones, through the speakers. Don't worry. Just pray. Just pray. Hear your own self out. Don't be a spectator. No, don't be a spectator. Cry it out to the Lord. Your tongue is going to turn. You will see that you have started speaking a language. It is by faith. It is by faith. It is by faith. Building up, it's building up, it's building up, it's building up. Don't be distracted. Your mind might be roaming, but you are saying, I'm not stopping. Don't be distracted. You might be feeling uncomfortable, but you are saying, I'm not stopping. Things might be running through your mind. The devil might be throwing arrows into your mind. You are saying, I'm not stopping. No, lift up your voice and cry out. others pray through the speakers I want you to hear yourself pray Something is happening. Something is happening. Something is happening. The Holy Ghost is present here. Lift up your voice. You are saying tonight. Tonight. Your tongue is turning. You are going to hear. You are going to feel like speaking ma 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 la 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 la. That is it. The Holy Ghost is here.
If you are already baptized in the Holy Ghost, keep praying. Keep praying. Deeper dimensions. The prophetic, the apostolic, the evangelistic, the flow. For those who are already baptized, if you have a friend, you want to take a partner, if you have a partner, you want to hold the person's hand, you are free to do that and travel. If you have anybody you want to pray with, you can just hold hands and keep praying to encourage one another. speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto man for no one understands him however in the spirit he speaks mysteries yeah there is a flow push it press on there is a flow it's rising from the ankle to the knee from the knee to the waist until you are overwhelmed, lift up your voice. place the glory of God is in this place yes yes it's building up it's building up don't give up it's building up already some speak some people are speaking in tongues already already some people are speaking in tongues lift up your voice in you
Open your mouth and speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Stay it up. That is it. That is it. That is it. Don't doubt it. That's it. That's it. Building up, it's building up. Some people might fall, others might not fall.
Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, we need you. Come, sweet Spirit, we pray. Come, in your strength and your power. Come, in your own special. Come, Holy Spirit, we need you. Come, sweet spirit, we pray. Come in your strength. Come with your strength and your power. Yes, Lord, come. Come in your strength and your power. up your hands. Oh, ye va so malaba la baba. Listen. Listen. I sense a release, just listen, a release of the prophetic grace here. In the name of Jesus, eyes are opening, ears are opening. Right now in the name of Jesus, receive the prophetic, receive a touch. Right now in the name of Jesus, fire all over in the name of Jesus. Maraba bala baha samolo bo pais. Fena na na ni malo pali ani maha pais. Shela mana makali mana maham pala baba pais. Let young men begin to prophesy. Let young ladies begin to prophesy. Masha baba 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 baya. Mala baba pai. There is a release of the spirit of prophecy of the prophetic right now in the name of Jesus. Shada na bahabas. Manda Bahaya Mando Lobo Shatana Mahai Fena Manama Sobale Roba Babariana Namahos Come in your strength, O Lord. Come in your power, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you tonight. Now, now, in silence, with if you can lift up your hands. I was telling God that God, let somebody who doesn't believe in this whole thing about Christianity, this whole thing about the whole, let somebody who doesn't believe have an encounter with you tonight. Now with your hands lifted. Oh Spirit of God. Arrest hearts. Let hearts be arrested. Something is really happening here. There is liquid fire here. Let somebody who has never encountered you Spirit of God. Encounter you tonight. Let someone who has not known you. And ask doubts and questions. Let every heart in heart be captured by the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, my Yiko Fele has over. Vendo Nande Lopari Akasayas. 
Jena mani molo pariande. Ruda daria mostindi ni mikapa. In the name of Jesus. Sholo moho paya kasala bahaya. E borono ni mi mandele mo suta la makapanda la bahaya. Now. We, we don't have too much time. So lastly, listen. If there is a hold of the devil upon anybody's mind that is oppressing you through indulgences and through addictions tonight, we command a release. In the name now, anybody going through any kind of oppression, any kind of addiction, I want you to put your hand on your head. Just put your hand on your head. If you're like that, put your hand on your head. Right now, in the name of Jesus, as you have put your hands on your head, addictions of lust, break your heart in the name of Jesus. The devil will not have place in your life. In the name of Jesus, 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 go, 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 you foul spirits, you foul spirit, I speak to you right now, in the matchless name of Jesus, go. Spirit of infirmity, spirit of sickness, whatever it is, right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. in the name of Jesus. Kabaya Hapalia Sunday. Revene me kona mahapila saya Ronda na bapari anda basha Ma ye 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 Be free 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 Mahapai Aisa Avalos Be free Thank you Jesus Oh, Ramane Mokota Lama Sata Yabahas. Listen, I see somebody. You keep having nightmares. Very strange, strange dreams. That scare you. They scare you. And you are wondering where they are coming from. Tonight, the Lord has come for you. Right now, I declare an end to that cycle. In the name of Jesus. Let that hold be broken. 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 Let that hold be broken right now. Marcelehos. Venamanamahandos. Receive visions of the Lord. Receive revelations from the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah, rese no mokobahas. Now, lastly, we our time is up. I need to close now. Listen, 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 as we are praying, I see people being be given swords, swords, it's like a sword, and then on the sword it is written, miraculous, miraculous, the miraculous, the miraculous, we need people to be used by God. To cause the miraculous in the UK, I see swords being handed over to people with miraculous written on it. Miraculous, miraculous. Now, in the name of Jesus, Spirit of God, Spirit of God, touch them, touch them, oh God, touch them, oh God. There's fire in your hands to work miracles. Come on, receive it right now. Come on, receive it right now. Ma, 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 ma. You shall lay hands upon the sick 
and they shall recover. Receive it right now. Yes, fire on your hands. That sword is being given to you right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Palema Alema Soma Namahaya. Ema Mero Peneme Sotolo Monsha Namahaya. Lebaki Namahando Selemendo Roho Shadabaya. Alelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelel
in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus now listen let's let's be silent please sometimes we just need to make use of the gifts of the Holy Spirit listen I I hear that there's a young lady here listen your mother has been praying for you very prayerful she has been praying for you that you would take after her and as I'm speaking she's praying for you praying for you praying for you that you will catch that mantle of prayer in this service God is saying that he has given it to you in the name of Jesus whoever that person is may that grace come upon you right now let prayer warriors arise from this place praying hours traveling for UK speaking into lives of people let intercessors arise they are the real army let fire fall on you in the name of Jesus now now look at me all those who have spoken in tongues today I mean right now you've spoken in tongues right now lift up your hands and let me see you've spoken in tongues right now wow wow okay please come all those all those who have lifted up their hands please come those who have spoken in tongues if you want to keep speaking in tongues keep please come this way come this way come to my left come this way please this way oh glory to god wow wow no can you let's send them there so that we could see there wow 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 listen if we had like two hours oh Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost is if we had time, eh? You 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 will see every, everybody will speak. The Holy Spirit is looking for people to use. Wow. Wow. Glory to God. Wow. 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 My mentes. Thank you, Lord. For those of you who have not yet spoken in tongues, don't be discouraged at all. We are, we are not done. As you are going, as you are going, you'll be surprised that when you, you get into the escalator, you just get on it. You people will burst into speaking. This experience will continue. Don't, don't, don't get discouraged. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. It will come out. It will come out. The Lord richly bless you. Amen. No, don't, don't be discouraged at all. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged at all. It, it's going to work. It's going to work for you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Let's please take our seats. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We'll, bring, bring, we'll be bringing the service to a close very shortly. Hallelujah. How many of us have been blessed this evening? How many of us have been blessed this evening? In one accord, I just want us to shout, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Indeed, we've been blessed. A big God bless you goes to our pastor Ebenezer Ejapong for once again ushering us and giving us the word of God and ushering us into prayer. Hallelujah. We'll be closing shortly.
Hallelujah. All too soon we are bringing day four to an end. Aww. <laughs> I thought somebody would say aww. But tomorrow we are back again. Oh, tomorrow we are back again. Oh, we don't seem excited. Tomorrow we are back again. Hallelujah. We are back again. And more announcements will come from uh, AJ later on. But we'll take our closing prayer. We'll take our closing prayer. And if I could humbly invite our Mrs. Ivy Esiam to give us the opening prayer, also known as Auntie Ivy, to give us the closing prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we be on our feet? Father, we just want to bless you, Lord, this evening. We give you praise, O oh Lord, for, Father, all the great things that you have done in our midst tonight. Father, we know, O oh God, that you have been here with us. And even as we continue the rest of this conference, Father, you are even going to do greater things. We pray, O oh God, Father, that even as we're going to sleep, that, Father, Lord, you continue to stir up our spirits, O oh God. Continue to speak to us, O oh God. Continue to open our hearts, O oh God, and our minds. That, Father, Lord, even as we come tomorrow, Lord, we'll be ready to receive more from you, O oh God. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity, O oh Lord, to even be in your army, O oh God, and to be soldiers, O oh God, in this great army. We bless you, Father. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Mommy. And as we remain upstanding, please, we're going to receive the benediction as well. And if I can, please invite our Papa, um, Pastor uh, Isiam, to also give us the benediction, please. As we remain upstanding with our hands lifted up, we will receive the benediction. with our hands lifted up. May the power of the Lord come upon us. May grace that calls us to stand in this army come upon us. May the favor of the Lord be upon us. May fire fall upon us. May we enjoy the goodness of the Lord. May we stand in this army strong and firm to declare the goodness of the Lord. As we go to rest, be blessed, be blessed, and be blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please take your seats. Even as we are going and getting out of here, if anybody experiences speaking in the gift of tongues for the first time outside of service, please be sure to notify your district youth leaders. Amen. Now, we are almost at the end. We have almost made it through our time here in Wales together. But unfortunately, we are still getting noise complaints from the hotels. We are still getting complaints about the way some of us are conducting ourselves. We're making too much noise as we're going back to our hotels. We are congregating in the hallways of our locations and disturbing the other occupants of those hotels so please 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 we are asking with you and pleading with you especially as you're going back tonight try to keep the noise down try not to be running down the hallways of your hotels try to conduct yourself in a way that is pleasing to God and that helps us to maintain the reputation of our church also, parents and youth leaders with kids under 14 years old, we are asking that you keep an eye on them at all times. We've had little children running around, hanging off banisters, throwing stuff all over the place, rolling on the floor. Please, it's, it's getting to the point where we are afraid a child might get hurt. So please make sure that if you're a youth leader and you have a child, or if you're a parent, you have a child under 14 with you here, 